What's up and welcome everybody to today's show. My name is Frank Salas and I go by the name of the talented Mr. Salas. We got a great show lined up for you today. So I just want to let you know that it's going to be an awesome one. All right, welcome to Millennial Marketers. My name is Frank Salas. I go by the name the talented Mr. Salas here on social media. I've got an awesome guest for you today. This is Mr. Mitch Miller, he is everybody's favorite Canadian in the copywriting world, and he's a legit guy. He travels the world. He's a digital nomad like myself. Right now, I am in Medellin, Colombia, and today we're talking about legendary copywriting. So I don't know if you know this or not, but the stuff that you write actually makes dollars and cents. Those things that you put out into the marketplace, those little words, those emojis, those gifts, they make money, and there's a certain way to do that, and there's an expert that I know. His name is Mitch Miller. And he's from Opposed Media, he's a professional copywriter, and he's just the man when it comes to copywriting. I learn a lot from him literally every single day. So I, re I recommend that you right now follow him, look him up right now, everywhere online, Mitch Miller. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce my boy, Mr. Mitch Miller. Mitch, what's up, dude? Dude, thank you. I'm glad we're doing this again. Yeah, man. So we had you on the, sh on the show the, uh, the other uh, last year, last time I was in uh, Colombia, I'm sorry, in Mexico. Now I'm here in Colombia, and you are where right now? I am in Manila, Philippines right now. Manila, Philippines, man. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. So talk to us a little bit about yourself. Introduce everybody to who you are. All right. So uh, I'm a guy who never went to school. Um, I joined a lot of rock bands. I had metal bands and punk bands and that, that rock that rock life was my thing got a record deal that we turned down the band completely crushed and went down after that um and then i was kind of lost didn't know what to do um got hooked on drugs and did a lot of terrible things and uh and had a heart attack that was when i was 21 and so after the heart attack, I kind of reevaluate my life. I was like, I need to do something. I can't, I can't play music because I can't rely on four other dudes who don't know how. And the, the thing about business to try to, you know, make it in the business world, that was too painful to go back and make that work. Uh, so I was like, I, I want to do business wherever, whatever the hell I came up with that idea. It's like, I want to be, uh, I want to be self-sufficient. One thing I couldn't stand is rules and I couldn't stand working for people. I hated that type of shit. Type of shit. So um, I went on this. I embarked on this quest to get good at business, and it took forever because I was still me. I was this. Uh, I was a kid who couldn't hold a job. Uh, I hated discipline. I had zero work ethic. All I wanted to do was drink and smoke weed. I had nothing, and so I had to create everything that I am now from fucking scratch. And it took a good eleven to twelve years for it to really start popping. And, uh, and so business after business failing and failing and grinding and grinding, uh, until now it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's taken all life of its own. I can't, I can't stop the uh, success. We're doing tons of events, teaching products, um, uh, making people millions of dollars. Uh, and I, because there's, there's a certain level of mastery. No one ever gets full mastery. Like get my, my God, it's almost possible, but a certain level of mastery and to which this, this, this stuff whatever you want to call it, traveling the world, being free, teaching people shit, doing stuff for them, running the business, all that's become a uh, fun and and kind of easy and just kind of effortless. And it's more like dancing with it instead of grinding up against it. And uh, and that's basically it. We just travel the world. I'm like, I'm here in Manila, in a China visa, going back to Davao tomorrow. Uh, I'm there for two days, going to uh, Sydney, Australia to speak at an event for two days and then going to some place in China I can't fucking pronounce for two days, <laughs> Beijing for a day, North Korea for two days, back to Beijing, then to Vietnam, and then back to our home in Phuket. So it's just insane travel all the time for years now. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So you're pretty good at this copywriting stuff, you would say. Uh, I've been known to craft a word or two. <laughs> so what does copywriting mean to you? How do you view copywriting, Mitch? I view copywriting as the most important goddamn fucking skill you could ever uh, have in your life because copywriting is not copywriting at all. The word actually does the whole thing a damn disservice. So what we're actually talking about is we're talking about persuasive arguments. Now that could be verbal, that could be written, that could be audio, uh, but persuasive arguments is what copywriting is. Copywriting is no longer – it's an old term used for like old school uh, magazine writing and old uh, newspaper writing and stuff like that. But the word copywriting needs to die. 
We don't need to think about it. Think about persuasive argument. And that shit was around since Plato and fucking Aristotle and the, the university debate clubs and stuff. If you really want to learn to be good at coffee, go, walk, go look at debates and see that type of stuff. Go watch court dramas, TV shows. So to me, copywriting is uh, uh, persuasive argumentation, which I'll actually try to maybe blow your minds here a quick second. The idea of a persuasive argument is the most important skill you could ever learn because it's actually the fabric of humanity itself. And here's what I mean. Our goal as a species is to survive and rep replicate as a species. That's what we do. We want to survive the species at all costs and we want to replicate and uh, live on the species. Well, in order to do that, we need to work together to do that because we can't go against each other. Now, if you notice in life, we, everything's a competition. There's status. And if you guys are, want to be good at argumentation, persuasion, uh, psychology, marketing, you understand that status exists. We compete. There's hierarchies. There's there's no getting away of, uh, around that, no matter what the, the liberal hairy arm feminists say. So <laughs> because we compete and we, we go for hierarchies, the truth is, is that there's only one way to compete without killing our, each other. Because if you want to get on that higher, uh, go up the ladder and compete in the hierarchy, you can do one of two things. You can either go there through force, which is violence and killing people and forcing them against their will, or you can get their cooperation. That's the only way to get what you want out of life. You can take it by force or get cooperation. The act of getting cooperation is persuasion itself. So communication Getting what we want out of life is persuasion, and persuasion is copy. So literally, mastering or trying to master copy is the only life skill that is the most important that you could possibly learn. I love it. I love it. So what are some crazy things that you've learned from copywriting? How has copywriting just shifted your reality? <laughs> So the way you speak shifts everything around you. And this can get scary because you definitely don't want to lie. But it's easy to spin things and twist them around to get what you want. And so the, the best thing that I found that copy helps with, besides making me more money than I can uh, than I than I ever thought I could make, is is the is um knowing that you're able to think clearly and logically and properly and rationally. You have reason. So when so life is one big debate. This person says this. This person says this. You got you guys deliberating this decision and all that. It's all a debate, but it's all a it's all in order for us to figure out what we want or what things in the world mean or try to make rational decisions. We talk with other people, and it's through that talking that we discover what's right and wrong and what we want to do. the The idea of copywriting is you if you want to be good at it, you have to be forces you to be clear. It forces you to be concise. It forces you to be sharp. It forces you to think clearly, not with what you want or your biases or how you think the world should be, but you start to begin to see the world for what it is. And when you see the world for what it fucking is, then you can actually navigate it like a pro and you don't get butthurt all the time. You don't get super stressed. It's like, because you get to see the reality of what it is. And most people are living in delusion. So for me, copywriting, just having to get good at it forces you to live in reality and Nobody lives there, and so you have. To, so, so the best thing about that is you live in reality. No one else lives there. You kind of get to move everything around like the Matrix. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So this series is titled "Legendary Copywriters," and we're actually featuring legendary copywriter Eugene Swartz in our volume one. Um, we were actually trying to pick which uh, part or which copy to go after, and we both like at the same time was like, "Hey, do you have this one?" And it was just like, oh, man, because I was really excited to go after this particular piece of copy. Uh, I love studying it. I've learned so much from it, and I can't wait to learn from you. So uh, right now, we're sharing the screen with everybody, and everybody should be able to see uh, this, this copy. So uh, are you able to see my screen, Mitch? No, but that's fine because I just pulled up the ad myself on my laptop. Awesome, man. Awesome. So cool. Um, so we have the headline up here. It says, do you have the courage – to earn half a million dollars a year. Talk to us about yes. headlines real quick. All right, so this is completely off the cuff. I, I, this was just, this is the, truthfully, this is the only one I know off by heart as far as the headlines. So that's why I said we should do that one because it's the only one I know. <laughs> I said there's lots I want to think about it um, because the headline itself is so telling and most people miss this, okay? So first of all, the picture which they're going to look at before they read the headline. The picture shows what? It shows him putting on 
pearls for his woman, whether it's his wife or it's his mistress or whatever, but that he's, it shows that he's being a real man. You can be a real man by giving your wife pearls, things that she deserves. So right from the get go, the method, the, the image itself says it all. It's like the, the image says that if you want to be respected as a man by your woman and give her the pearls and give her the things that she wants, then this is so it's already creating that feeling. Now the headline itself, do you have the courage to earn a half a million dollars a year? Eugene is a fucking genius because what he did, if you think about it, he that's a big claim. And if this this ad was in like the sixties or something, that's like three million dollars a year. That's not, a, that's not a half a million in today's money. That's like three million bucks a year. So that's a fucking huge claim. Now here's what's sick about it. That's an outlandish, crazy huge claim, but he deflects it. And he, what he does is change the, the frame. So instead of you focusing on how outlandish his claim is, instead he qualifies you and turns it, deflects it from a claim of big money to are you qual- do you have – the character within you to earn that kind of money. So he's by the question he's asking is asking you to go inward and ask if you have what it takes versus him saying, Hey, I'm a marketer. Would you like to, I can teach you how to make this much dollars a year. So he puts it instantly with the headline. He turns it on you and makes you prove yourself to him from the first line. That's just some great ninja stuff, man. I hope you guys are going back and listening to this over and over again. Mitch, can you tell us where do headlines fit in today's marketing world of Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, podcasts? How do we leverage this to today's marketing? They fit everywhere. They've never gone anywhere. It's so every, anytime you start anything. So if you if you open up your Snapchat and you're talking, if you have a Facebook ad and it's a video – Plus, there's some text. If it doesn't matter what you're doing, the first sentence you utter, the first sentence, first words you write, it, it doesn't matter. It's the first words you write are always the headline. The first thing they see or the first thing they hear or the first thing they watch or the first thing they read is is always the headline. It's the first fucking thing that 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 they're that they're that they read. So most people, like for example, it fits everywhere, but people don't realize. It. So the purpose according to Joe Sugarman, which I believe, he says the purpose of a headline is to get, the number one purpose is to get someone to read the first, the second line. It's like they just have to read the second line from that. So keeping that in mind, then in today's world, it's super easy. So here's most people. They get on a Facebook Live. They're like, hi, so um, welcome everybody. I'm here on Facebook Live. It's Ashley. Um, just here in my car and, oh, hey, hi, Jim. Jim, how you doing? Good, good. Oh, hey, hey, Rob. Okay, so anyways, I had this crazy idea and I was um, – it, it was yesterday when I was dropping the kids off. I had this idea and I decided I wanted to keep – she doesn't get to the fucking point. That's a terrible way. She's in the body copy and it's boring by, by, body copy, by the way, but she doesn't have a headline. So turn the video on and be like, hey, guys – or not even hey, guys. Fuck hey, guys. Be like, confidence. Do we want, do you want more of it? Of course you do. And so in this quick video and this quick live, I'm going to share with you guys that an instant confidence secret that you can use anytime you need to pick me up and it's going to give you massive confidence. Okay. It's easy to do anyway. Oh, Hey Rob. Okay. So yeah, I was dropping my kids off yesterday and then I had this idea because I saw my kid and you see how like if you start it with the headline, uh, something that it means for them. Um, and that's even on the, even on the Snapchat. Okay. You go up, you like, um, that's what Ty Lopez does. Snapchat goes up. He's like, iPhone, iPhone. Want to give 10 people an iPhone. He doesn't say, Hey, it's Ty. So how you guys doing? Okay. Well, <laughs> guess what? I want to give you guys an iPhone. No headlines first. So in today's world, just understand that you may not be constructing a sales letter, so to speak, where you have this gregarious headline, but just keep in mind that everything that you say when, the, when you first utter it has to be headline worthy or at least uh, good enough that they want to listen to what you have to say after it. I love it, man. I love it. And so just to really reiterate that, headlines are everywhere. These are on your email subjects, your YouTube video titles, your live stream titles, your blog post titles, the second subject line that you send out on emails, text messages. Every time you communicate, that's a headline. Even a Snapchat, like you were saying, you know, what is the user going to get? And there's different ways to play that. And 
The reason I really love this ad is because of what everything Mitch just said. Eugene Swartz, legendary copywriter, is like, yo, let me show you this beautiful girl and this baller dude. And baller dudes are supposed to buy beautiful girls nice pearls and make a half a million dollars a year. And do you have the courage to be a baller dude? You know, and then it hits you with a, sub, a subtitle below that that says, this is a private advertisement. It is meant for the tremendously ambitious man only. Break down, first and foremost, what is a sub headline in your mind, Mitch? Uh, a sub headline in, in, in my eyes, there, well, there's so many different meanings it can have and there's no hard and fast rule. My hard and fast rule is whatever I say in the headline, it's like, when you make a headline, it has to be so clear and concise that you leave out a lot of what you mean by it. And that's pretty good too because also that, 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 that's intrigue and curiosity, which is good. That curiosity will help them read more. But usually I just – what I do is I, I either bait them like he did here with some exclusivity and uh, you know this is only for you. He's like, oh, that's for me. That's for me. That is me. Um, but um, usually all I do is to, to clarify um, – to clarify a little more of the, of the meat, still keeping curiosity. So I'd be like, you know, um, I'll show you how to write incredibly amazing copy. Even if you're, uh, even if you, even if you hate writing. And then the sub headline would be like, um, I've, I've created a brand new formula that anyone can follow that, that you can be able to do this in under four weeks. So like, it's almost like a headline itself and it's just a little bit more baiting, a little more info, but it has even more curiosity to keep you reading down. So in my mind, sub-headline, without getting too cute about it, just say some shit uh, related to your headline that doesn't give the full story away but makes them want to read further down. Now, what's interesting about dude's um, – the, dude, the picture up there, if you look one more time, he's wearing a suit. He's looking baller. The people reading this ad, the market is not the guy in the suit. So, but he wants to be the guy in the suit. He wants to be the James Bond. So, the subheadline here says this is a private advertisement meant for the tre tremendously ambitious man only. Now, Eugene Schwartz is a fucking master of the business opportunity market. This is a business opportunity ad. This is not an improvement ad. This is like make money quick. The problem, the reason most people in the marketing make money online industry fail is they're trying to sell improvements. When people want opportunity, and there's a massive difference between that. So the tremendously ambitious man, Eugene Schwartz understands that people are extremely ambitious, but they will they won't they, they give up on that ambition the second something gets hard. But they're and but so it's so so what I'm trying to say here is he's saying this is a private advertisement because it's meant for the tremendously ambitious man only, as if it's a rarity and there's only a few tremendously ambitious men. Well, that's bullshit. The truth is, is that every every man believes he's ambitious. We know the truth that it's not. It's, it's shortly held ambition. It's barely ambition. But he knows that every man considers themselves ambitious. Nobody thinks they're stupid, right? Everyone thinks they're a fucking genius, <laughs> even the fucking dummies. So it's like, so he's trying to make it seem exclusive, and that you're basically you and him are the only ones in on this thing, and you're one of the rare people that are might be qualified, might be because of the headline and fit for this. However. The truth is, this is for fucking every dude. That's crazy. So I'm, I'm going to stop right there, Mitch, because what you just said is so brilliant. And I, I honestly feel you're one of the most underappreciated copywriters just of all time ever because of the way you spit. And he just told us that in this headline, there was a double disqualification. There's two times where Eugene Swartz says, I don't know if this is right for you. I, don't, I really don't know if this is right for you. And the fact that he does that actually pulls in the right kinds of people. And he does it with the words and he does it with the images. So everything is all 100% contrived. There is a end goal here. And he only had a certain amount of space to be able to write down this kind of message. And he had to think about it 100% and figure out, okay, what is going to go on here? What is this going to make somebody feel? And most importantly, how is this going to compel them to read to the next part of the actual advertisement. So, Mitch, we're going to jump down to the next, uh, the first section. I'm going to read it out loud, uh, and then you know maybe we can break that down just a bit. So, for those of you guys following along on our live stream and our recording, here you go. You guys are going to get zoomed in. So, uh, again, just to read the whole thing. Do you have the courage to make a half a million dollars a year? This is a private advertisement. It is meant for the tremendously ambitious man only. It is meant for the kind of man who has, first of all, 
the relentless desire to earn more money in a single year than most of his friends will earn in their entire lifetime. We got to stop there and talk about that, Mitch. <laughs> well, he, he's in the business opportunity market. So uh, he understands. So he's in the business opportunity market. So he keeps saying, man, he's excluding women. Why? Because he's in the business opportunity market. There are women who are interested in business opportunity, but not as many. It's about 80% male. So he knows that already. So he doesn't care if he excludes. He wants to get direct. He wants to get that direct hit. So that's that's one thing I picked up. But the next thing about this is simply the piece where he says more money than your friends earn. That in a nutshell is uh, – well, I don't know about a nutshell. But that is huge because he understands the truth about people. The truth is everyone wants to make more money than their friends and nobody wants to make less. And so he just says it. And most people are afraid to say it or don't know it, but that's huge um, because he understands it. We want to be able to make more than our neighbor, so to speak. I love it. I love it. I love it. So there we go. We're playing with the status. So I always, I always call the status, you know, area. I always call it the Kim Kardashian effect. Everybody want every girl in America wants to be Kim Kardashian. They don't care how they get there. They just want to be Kim Kardashian. That's how. That's how they're meant. That's how they're sold. You know, from the general general media advertisements, hey, if you buy this, then you get to be Kim Kardashian. If you work out this booty workout, you get to be Kim Kardashian. If you use this perfume, you get to be Kim Kardashian. And so what does Kim Kardashian look like? Travel the world, be with famous people, have a lot of followers, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of what they're selling. They're selling status here in this area. So jump into the next paragraph. It's, uh, it is meant for the kind of man, secondly who has enough sheer raw faith in himself to believe today that tomorrow may actually be able to take home 40 or 50,000 a month once has once he has been shown the techniques of making this kind of money Mitch take it away well there's just some mental ninjutsu going on here so uh, he's he's still he's still baiting you. He's still qualifying you the entire way. Um, he's not trying to sell you. He's trying to make you sell yourself to him. Uh, and so what he's saying is, if you believe that you can make this kind of money, and then he says, once he has been shown the techniques of making this kind of money, which is just so it's so ridiculous because he's putting a he's putting a, a command and a belief in there. Um, it, it's it's absurd. So. So instead of saying, uh, I could like let, let me show you the techniques of making forty, fifty thousand dollars a month, and then and then you know you'll see and you'll believe. So what he's saying is you'll believe that you can do this once you have been shown the techniques, but you ain't getting the techniques unless you buy. He's not giving them away on his app. So let me see, is this is this thing selling anything or is this a lead lead magnet? Yeah, let's go let's go back to the very, very end. Let's go down to the very bottom. So let's see. It says see what it is. mail no risk coupon today. Gentlemen, yes, I want to read how to increase your money making power entirely at your risk. I'm closing only $5.98 complete. I will use this book for 10 days at your risk. If I am not delighted, I will return it for my money back. Okay, cool. So this is like a tripwire because he gets you in five bucks and what he sends you back is another sales letter with those techniques on it and stuff like that to sell you a higher ticket item. That's how that worked back in the day. And so, so what he's saying is, you know, you'll be able to, to, to take home 40, 50 grand a month once you've been shown this killer techniques of making this kind of money. So he doesn't want you to really believe he wants you to just suspend your disbelief, just send me five ninety five, and I'll show you the goods. Then you can believe. And then you buy his higher ticket item. So he's not even asking you to really believe at this point. He knows you won't, but he's going to ask you to, uh, it's a business opportunity market. People don't believe in themselves, unfortunately. What he does through this, what we do through this uh, copy, is you help people believe in themselves enough and you pump them up enough that it opens up a window where they temporarily suspend disbelief and then you get them to buy before that window closes again. Um, and unfortunately, most people close on themselves, but some people keep it open, they get results. And that's what we keep doing. So, Love it, man. I love the breakdown. Love the breakdown. Keeping it moving, keeping it moving. Uh, and finally, it is meant only for the man who is willing to make the sacrifices that this kind of income demands, who is willing to take the gambles, 
endure the tensions, fight the inevitable, inevitable battles where his brain is pitted against some of the sharpest minds in the country for prizes beyond the imagination of ordinary men. Ah, so that brings out the warrior in you, the innate warrior that all men want to be warriors and fighters. And in fact, most men are not that. And they're so um, pacified by life that they do it, they but they still need that. They need to feel that. So how do they do it? They go do it by playing video games where they could be a fucking warrior. They instead of going to the army or battling, they go do it on the game, Call of Duty. Or guess what? Maybe they don't uh, do Call of Duty, but they watch football and they're like, yeah, I can fucking live through them. Or they watch WWE. Okay, so the every man ha needs to feel like a warrior, but sometimes they do it through movies, television, video games, and sports. Uh, so. Um, what he's saying here is he's bringing out that primal, you want to like feel alive again, you lazy fuck type thing. <laughs> but also at the same time, simultaneously, what he's doing is he is also making it seem a little real. It's, it's like it's not instant money and you just push a button and make money. It's It still requires work. So it makes what he's saying a little more believable and brings it a little bit more down to earth. I love it. So a takeaway, let's say I'm writing a sales page and I've got a mastermind for people who have, you know, uh, marketing agencies. I could say, hey, here's the kind of money that you can make, but it does take some sacrifices to make it more real. Just basically say, this is the kind of money you can make. However, there's some work behind that. That will, in the reader's mind, make it more realistic and doable for them. Totally. You can be like, you know, it's like, listen, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to promise that it's all going to be sunshine, sunshine and roses. There's going to be some hard days, but you know what? Those hard days, that's what forges you as a man. And that's what makes that, that's what forges your warrior spirit. And it makes you so awesome. And then, you know, when you, and then you'll be the kind of man who can handle anything and your friends will look like pussies in comparison, like that kind of <laughs> shit. So it's like, you're you're tell, you're you're being you're leveling with them that there's going to be work involved, but then you're glorifying that work into the warrior spirit, which then which which channels that because because people especially in this market if we're talking about this business opportunity thing they don't really want to do work and they're going to be lazy and they know they're going to be lazy they want to be lazy but if you can like I said we're temporarily opening up belief and, and, and disbelief in themselves but if you can push all that to the warrior spirit then you can get them feeling that way about themselves temporarily enough to buy love it man love it love it so this next this next paragraph is just killer so he says and above all a man who is willing to accept the responsibility for other men's futures the loneliness that always surrounds the person in command the envy and hostility that will plague him for the rest of his life take it away <laughs> Okay, so people who aren't in the business opportunity space, regular people, don't really want that. Okay, but there's a dirty little secret about business opportunity seekers, internet marketers, get rich quick in real estate, those kind of people. We, I say we because I was a recovering one. <laughs> I now become a focused entrepreneur, but I, I absolutely was this market. That's part of why I know it so well. Uh, what that, though, that paragraph right there is – the insatiable, usually insecure, bottomless pit of a hole that these people want filled with significance from other people. And so the idea of being a – this is why people love Scarface, right? Because Scar you accept the responsibility for other men's futures, control them. doesn't matter if he's lonely. You just do coke at a desk. The hostility and envy <laughs> that will plague you, it's like – you know what? Because they want to be that gangster. They, that's why a lot of us are drawn to those mafia movies. Deep down inside of us, we want to be the Godfather, and so it's just pushing on that. Yeah, man. I the the the, the thing for me is I always wanted to be like a Godfather, one of those Al Pacino guys, because I wanted to not pay the taxes. I was like, that was the biggest draw for me. <laughs> <laughs> and you get Sharon Stone. And you get Sharon Stone, baby. All right, man. So jumping over to the next part, um, says, all right, do you have the courage to reach out for this kind of life to accept its incredible rewards and incredible hazards? If you do, read on. If you don't, consider yourself lucky and turn the page. There is nothing left in this ad that will make a lot of sense to you. 
Okay, so do you see how it, it's like this whole um, reward and hazard and, and reap the treasures and all that? It makes you feel like 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 like, like you like this could be an ad for uh, applying for Survivor. <laughs> this could be, you know, I mean, this could be this could be an ad to enroll you in the army. It's triggering those same things. And so this last one, this last one you just said here, this is like, this is the uh, typical takeaway. And uh, where he's saying, you know, are you, uh, would you like this stuff? If you do read on, if you don't, there's nothing left for you here. Basically saying what he's basically saying. I sometimes do this. I'm like, um, I'm like, okay, at a, at a live event, like everyone put your hand up. I said, everyone. I'm like, those of you who don't want to put your hand up, leave. You're wasting your time. You're wasting my time. If you're not, if you're not uh, serious about yourself, that's totally cool, but you can do that outside and not bother the rest of the people who are. And, but that makes them want to focus in more. So it's a, it's a takeaway. It's a false takeaway because he knows that by you reading it, especially if you got that far, you've already like, you already bought in that him by him saying that is going to push you in more. And, and the guy in his head is thinking, yeah, all those other fucking pussies, fuck them. He's like, he's like, I'm in, I'm in like, fuck that. Cause in fact, when, whenever I do this push away in some of our groups, all the other members will come in and say like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to be here, leave, we're committed. And so it's a, it's a takeaway that makes you, he's pushing you away. You know, you know, if a girl ever plays hard to get, she fucks with your heart and she pushes you away and you just want it, you want it more. It's exactly what he's doing here. It's beautiful. <laughs> man that's just some real talk right there man that's that's so great we got to speed it up because we i don't want to monopolize your time uh we're not even halfway through the thing so uh but it's just been gold so far so to uh, the next the next part is an actual uh sub 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 subject line or sub subtitle line sub headline that says uh to make gigantic sums of money you throw out all the rules that small safe men live by every day why is that bold why is that bigger than everything else mitch it, so you, you're noticing the theme hey the theme of adventure he wants you to throw caution to the wind so that you pay him money feeling like throwing ah fuck it i'll do it let's <laughs> do it i don't give a fuck let's do it. he's exactly what he's doing this is the whole theme of the thing and so he said but the gigantic sums of money frank kern said it frank kern knows this industry very well he said number one people think is people respond to gigantic claims of sums of money well he did that in the very first line um and number two is um uh it's so extremely big numbers um and then i forget the second one that frank said but what they want and it's not in the subhead there but they want to do they want to do it uh, as easy as possible and as fast as possible obviously so um again this gigantic sums of money is hitting the head on the 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 nail on the head is that's the core thing this market wants, and he said it in the headline. So it's it's and this is like a second headline, so to speak. This is another uh, one of those breaks in the paragraph. So the gigantic sums of money is the the north star, the focal point of this whole ad that you never want to get lost in. That's the fucking thing. And then the whole throw the rules that small safe men live by. Small safe men, like small. It's like small safe. Like that's just the most. Who, who wants to be a small, safe man? <laughs> like, but this is the thing. Small, safe men will hear that and they're like, oh, like it hits them. They're like, oh, fuck, that's me. Like, I'm, you know, I'm an insurance salesman now and I'm living in Oklahoma and like, I hate my kids and I get paid like 20 bucks an hour. Fuck this shit, man. And, and so he's just really, he's, he's, he's brilliant. I love it, man. I love it. This is great. The, the next part is one of my most favorite aha moments for me is in copy. I always thought you had to like tiptoe around what the offer is. But for me, when I started studying Eugene Swartz, he straight up says this. What we are selling on this page is a book about making fabulous sums of money. It is possibly the most unusual how-to book ever written. First, because it distills a lifetime of wisdom from one of America's most distinguished and successful financiers, and second, because it reveals, to our knowledge, for the first time between the covers of a single book, the almost completely unknown techniques of the super money makers, the men who take home 500000 or a million or $5 million a year. <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're spot on with um, you can beat straight up and, and, and because he's been baiting you and qualifying you the whole time and he's got you on the defense, 
now he and he can say this without coming off as, as super needy off the bat um, because you're already trying to sell yourself on him. It's, it's not a big deal to throw it out. Now, what's cool about this here is um, the word unusual. So in this market, that's huge. That is no fucking accident. Um, people want to uh, – I learned this from uh, the book A Lifetime of Homework, as in homework, like work from home. Yeah. And the guy wrote the book in like 1930 or 1920 or something, and it's incredible. Uh, he had a good like 40 or 50-year career selling business opportunity. Unusual. People want unusual ways. And if you notice, so he says, where is it? Uh, complete, almost completely unknown, which is ridiculous. It's like almost completely is such a ridiculous statement. It's like, is it? Because completely means completely. So what do you mean almost completely? Anyway, um, almost completely unknown techniques. So those are the two key words in that entire paragraph because people want unusual and, and un, almost completely unknown. And the reason they want that is the same reason people are afraid to get into a niche that's already packed or that's already busy and, uh, and, and large. It's because they don't, they believe there's too much competition because their self-esteem is, is, and their skill is generally low. They feel that they can't get into that niche because if everyone's in there, what the hell chance do I have? That's what they think. And so it's no accident they put unusual and completely unknown because that means it's a, it's a niche that you can go and compete in because there's almost nobody there. So you can get the money easy. I love it. I love it. And then this next part was just even crazy. And I remember reading this in a lot of the courses and programs that I signed up for because I'm a fan of other people's work. I sign up for programs all the time. And he says, let us emphasize right here that you do not need big money to use these techniques. They will work with any amount of starting capital, even as little as 500 or 1,000. Which a quick note, I want to I want to just kind of say that at the very top, he brings up a half a million dollars a year. The second paragraph, he brings up forty to fifty thousand. Then the paragraph before this, he brings up you know half a half a million, a million, or five million. Then he brings up this will only work for as little as five hundred or a thousand. And then we go back to the actual offer, and the offer is only six, you know, five ninety eight. So I just wanted to note the numbers there. But what do you think about that net that last sentence where he's like, "Let us emphasize that you don't need big money. You can do this for even as little as five hundred or a thousand." Well, it's funny because he said you can work. It will work with any amount, but it's as little as a five hundred. So what about five hundred and below? He just—it's <laughs> like it's almost lying, right? He's like any amount. Just kidding. It's got to be uh, five or five hundred. So it's like, and then actually he bolded not, and then you know something. No, nope, bolded not, and then bolded any amount. And it's almost like he's not lying because he says not any amount. If your eyes skim that, <laughs> <laughs> it's like as little as five hundred. Uh, Anyway, he probably would have got a slightly better conversion, if not a hair more, just by not um, bolding the word not so that you don't see not any amount and your brain only reads any amount. But anyway, uh, like he wanted to. But what I see there is, well, the thing is, you do not need big money. The reason he's saying that is because he knows they don't have big money. So it's like they don't have it. So so why say that you need, you need it? Because that's going to be a huge objection in their mind as well well, fuck, I don't have the money to, to, to start this stuff. And he's like, you don't have to because you don't need much because you don't have much. So because, for example, if this was an opportunity ad for people who we knew was, were financially wealthy or or even like upper middle class and they had a lot, of, a lot of disposable income and they had a lot of easy access to credit, he probably wouldn't even put that in there. There's no need. Awesome, awesome, man. So, you know, we don't have the time to jump into the rest of this just because Mitch is such a fountain of just golden nuggets. But I want to jump over to the offer and let you let you guys know that they, he is selling something, and we broke down what that offer was. And this was so, sent to you know millions of people. How much money do you think this ad made, Mitch? Dude, I couldn't even guess. I know that this was in a lot of newspapers and I think magazines of some sort. This is a long time ago. Um, I couldn't even tell you, man. I, I wouldn't even begin to uh, to guess here. Let's see. Is in 1967. Where do you want to start? Where does the offer start here? Uh, the uh, offer. Let's see. I think it, they. Let's see. Okay, yeah. The, the don't risk disappointment. Yeah. Send for your copy today. There we go. Got Cause it. Because he, he was talking. So the the meat of that, you guys. Just for you guys watching, the meat of that was basically since he started talking about the guide, he was talking about. Uh, 
the things that you can learn. Don't use your own money. Um, you know, I'll teach you different tax exempt strategies and all this type of stuff. So he's like, I'll just, that's basically the, the bullet section. And this is like all the different benefits of getting the thing. Um, so yeah, go ahead, bro. Yeah, absolutely. So now this is kind of like what's in, like, it's like, this is what you get. This is module one. This is module two. That's kind of what the meat of all this stuff is in the middle. So like timing, greatness, the power of saying no, that's what you're going to get for this thing that we're offering there. And at the very, very end, he's just like, don't risk this appointment. Send for your copy today. It includes all this. He's just, you know, restacking the value saying, hey, but those six things that we talked about, the timing greatness, the power of saying no, doubling the profit from each deal, opportunity radar, uh, million dollar tax things, all that's going to be in there. And the choice is up to you. You can continue to make 5000 10000 or even 20000 a year the old hard way, or you can make 50000 a 100000 even a quarter of a million dollars a year by making these seemingly minor changes in the way you handle your time and money. It costs you nothing to prove this to yourself. And then he has his mail your no risk coupon there. What's he doing there to us? This is what's brilliant about Schwartz. Schwartz makes you put – he understands that you're – that he's not – okay, how do I explain this? Because I've never, I've never uh, said this before, but but Schwartz makes it so that he's not writing, he's not writing an ad to you that you're reading from him, him talking to you. You're reading an ad, basically, you wrote to yourself, basically, because what he says is it costs you nothing to prove this to yourself. When the truth is, it, it, the truth is that, but the truth is also that he's trying to prove it to you, the reader. But he doesn't say that. He deflects it and makes it only a you problem, which is the exact thing he does in the fucking headline, which he makes that statement a you problem. And that's what Schwartz does brilliantly. He puts it all on you <laughs> and, uh, and without putting it on you, without risking. So he says here, don't risk disappointment, send for your copy today. But then he says at the bottom of that next paragraph, without risking a cent, because he's talking about there's risk reversal. He's like... 10 days, you can get your money back. So what he's trying to say here is don't risk disappointment. What he's saying is you don't risk any money, but risking disappointment will be worse. And so that's the kind of thing that he's doing. And then he said, um, you know, you can, the choice is up to you. You can do the hard thing and this thing, or you can do, well, this is interesting. This is called a double bind. He said, the choice is up to you. Uh, you can continue to do X or you can do Y, but he gave you two choices. He gave them to you. The third choice is they could just do nothing. They could not do it. But because he didn't give you that choice, you only are working, you're operating with the only two choices he gives you. He decided your two choices. You can do X or you can do Y. He doesn't think, well, I could do Z. He's like, he's like, you can do this or you can do this. He's like, well, I don't want that. So of course I want to do that. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then, so, <laughs> and then the, 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 the little box underneath, um, Interesting. I've never read this before. Uh, this is first uh, first person. I think this this first person speak. Yes, I want to read how to. That stuff obviously works because they've done like crazy empirical testing. That type of uh, talking works. But if we want to circle back and think how that how that makes sense to today's world without being weird, and <laughs> right? Um, I'm guessing you do that through testimonials and case studies of other people where their experience and them talking about themselves, if there's such a match to you as, as the reader or the market to the testimonial match, that it feels like they're talking to themselves when they read it because it's just someone talking. Otherwise, I don't see how you could do that in today's video, Snapchat and all that without seeming like a weirdo. I, I agree, man. I agree. And I think they do that. Like you said, like, yes, uh, yes, I want to start saving money. And then like the no option is no, I like overpaying for stuff like that. You're like, ah, and I even if, even if I click no, I always feel bad, even though like I know what they're doing to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So all in all, this is a, this is an incredible, uh, incredible, incredible ad. Uh, he, He's trying to make this extremely risk-free, obviously. So don't use your own money. Only pay me this. Um, don't go into business without a, a single penny cash. Um, basically makes it completely unbelievable. 
it's a completely unbelievable to the average person. It's insane. It's, a, it's equivalent to $3 million a year. It's all this shit without any money. It's an extreme claim. You can't get, a, you can't get away with such blatant claims like this uh, in today's world unless they're in your funnels. You can't do it on the front lines from ads. You can do it inside your funnels. You, when you send letters to their house, you can do so. You can't do it on the front end. So you can – all this crazy shit that we get banned for, don't do it on the front end. <laughs> do it on the back. But – um, but the, the cool thing is, is that it's a very unbelievable proposition. However, with the whole theme of taking a chance, being a warrior, going out on a limb, fuck yeah, caution to the wind, be a real man, that whole feeling, that's the whole idea of copyright. You get swept up in that feeling and then you just do it. You, you suspend disbelief and you do something you wouldn't normally do. It's kind of like, it, you you if you're at, if you're at, if you're like you're you're with a woman and you just guys have such a great night and you guys just get swept up by the night and she's like oh my god I would never have done that like I don't do that often she's lying by the way but it's like I never do that often it's like she just swept up in the moment and you want to create those feelings inside the reader where you sweep them up in the moment and you snatching at that pocketbook say give me that five ninety eight yoink and it's in your bank account man I love it I love it awesome dude awesome. So this is this was a uh, Mitch Miller. We, you know, I'm going to be sharing your my screen now, and this is something that he has for us. You can find this by going to bit.ly forward slash tms Mitch Miller. Bit.ly forward slash tms Mitch Miller, and this is on his website. So uh, it says, "Attention influencers, will you let me help you make an extra ten thousand per month?" And this is uh, a nice little offer that he's got over there. So if you want to get into uh, his world. You know, or at least check out some amazing copy. Check out my boy's landing page right over here, and that's uh, how to get close to Mitch. You can also look him up on Facebook on Mitch Miller. Where else can we get a hold of you, Mitch? That's the best place. You want me, Mitch Miller? There's also a Facebook group that I run where I break down copy like this and give my own take on this whole crazy persuasion thing, and that's uh, called the uh, Winners of Marketing. That's the uh, that's the Facebook group. Um, I. I don't have the exact link, but uh, you guys can rummage around and find it. If not, find, find me on my personal profile and shoot me a message, and me or my assistant will send you the link to the Facebook group if you want to get in there. But check out that landing page, like Frank said, because that landing page is it's my social media mar marketing program. So it's all about uh, you know getting clients, being positioning yourself as an expert, how you craft words and to, in order to get people to follow you and like you and buy your stuff and all that. But just read the copy on there because it's some pretty sick stuff. And even if you don't buy the product, it's fine with me. People buy it all the time. I don't care if you do. Um, but go through it and learn from from reading that copy and see if you can't find some of these principles we just talked about in that literature. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, hey, hey, guys, that was Mitch Miller with Legendary Copywriters Volume 1. We covered Eugene Swartz. And I hope you stayed and watched this whole interview. If you are not using advanced copywriting skills in your marketing, you need to. If you're somebody who has a business with a vehicle or a vessel, you probably need to reach out to Mitch Miller. He's not cheap, but he's worth every cent. I learn from him every day. Mitch, thank you so much for being here on the show, man. We really appreciate you serving and you know giving us a lot of your value and your expertise. Thanks, man. I appreciate you too, brother. Awesome, man. Awesome. All righty. That was Millennial Marketers. We were covering legendary copywriting. Mitch Miller's tattoos were done by the fabulous tattoo artist.